Aloha. We are at Thomas Square, historic Thomas Square. Where sovereignty was restored to the Hawaiian people on July 31st, 1843. Where King Kamehameha III, Kaui Keauli, uttered Wamao Kea o Kaina i Kapono. The sovereignty of the, the land is continues in perpetuity. We're looking at, I'm standing near the uh, ward in Baratania Corner. Uh, of uh, Thomas Square. Where there was a tagging raid. We'll go, we'll go look um, before the folks come. We'll before the city crew arrive here, let's uh, take a look at what we got here. Now this fence is new. This cut off uh, part of the park. This area right here was the original encampment. Um, starting uh, November 5th, there were large uh, communal tents, a library tent, a meeting tent, a uh, cooking and dining area. And uh, the, this area was declared not sidewalk, but park, so that the city could enforce its uh, park closure rules. And on December 29th, they came in and they put white dots. And you see these white dots? And they said that marked the boundary between the uh, park and the sidewalk and then just the other day they drew another green <laughs> barrier in I, I don't know if you see these green line here and then they said everything within there was parks so the park has been growing in order to keep the uh, encampment uh, away and then I think beginning in March they put in this fence to try and actually mark the boundary of what they claim to be the park they put in these shrubs which are ficus they're non-indigenous uh, Although we call them shrubs, they're actually trees. Uh, they continue to grow. They have massive root systems that are known to buckle this concrete. <laughs> now they said that the um, campers encampment was blocking uh, access to the park and sidewalk area, they put in, they, the city, put in uh, 66 planters on this side to prevent campers from putting up tents. I shouldn't call them campers. Camping is a, camping is a um, recreational activity and this certainly, uh, wasn't recreational camping we're talking about. Anyway, so this access goes all the way down to Victoria Street. It does not allow um, two wheelchairs to pass. So if you're coming down on the ward and trying to get to the Victoria end and somebody in a wheelchair is doing the same or somebody walking a dog or somebody on a bicycle, that's a problem. I'm also receiving some uh, messages regarding uh, being a witness for trial. In fact, there is a trial coming up, the state uh, versus Madori Rumpung Warren on an attempt on a obstruction of 
government operations charge carries a one year in jail penalty her tent was right around here this area was open no no fence and uh, the police came and cordoned off this whole area at one time they were cordoning off this entire section of everything I mean there was yellow tape all the way down to this wall and she was in her tent and uh, she uh, was arrested for being basically being in her tent or near her tent and they called it obstruction of government operations which they had threatened before I have her on I have the police on video uh, threatening her on uh, March 14th, the morning of March 14th, 3 a.m., when they came and seized, made an illegal seizure of uh, signs, books, uh, pieces of art, standing Gawa artwork. What we're doing now, if you just joined us, is that we're waiting for those crews who have entered the park to conduct what's probably going to be the last raid under Bill 54. Bill 54 requires tagging property. It's supposedly an anti-property, uh, an anti-storage. You know, you can't store possessions on private property, Bill. And that's the supposed purpose. So crews have to come, they tag, um, They tag property like tents, bedding, that kind of stuff. And then they come back 24 hours later. Everything that was tagged is taken. Now, it's not really against storing property. It, it's just to criminalize homelessness and protest. They've taken, all, they've taken hundreds of signs. Hundreds of signs from deoccupy Honolulu they've conducted more than 70 raids and of course signs are part of the deal now you don't see many signs here at the moment this is the sign corner and if you follow the photographs of the area this area usually has a lot of signs when the signs are tagged they were taken so they're not being stored here they're moved out to private property these tents were not here 24 hours ago there were blue tents here 24 hours ago. Now people say, well, that's evading the law. And it's evading the penalty of the law. If the law is actually for property storage, which it's not, you know. This is not a avoiding that law. It's not storing property at all. It goes to private storage. Now they were having a little powwow there and they're heading off to the Victoria Street end. I might go take a look at the Victoria Street end because that's a homeless encampment that has endured. We'll get to walk down the sidewalk and check out the uh, Victoria Street encampment. They're not uh, politically affiliated. They get treated a lot worse. Uh, I've documented that when I could too. I want to be careful. <laughs> okay. Now there is an opening at the halfway point here. I'll go walk down there and see what's going on. We're walking toward the Victoria Street encampment. Now you can see uh, people stepping aside because there's not comfortable room for two people to, to pass by. I'm headed toward the Victoria Street encampment. I don't like to get to as nosy video-wise on the Victoria Street side. I know the, the Occupy doesn't mind the document documentation in fact they invite the documentation because there are special uh, 
laws is that there is a uh, stipulated agreement in federal court pending the outcome of their case uh, testing the constitutionality of Bill 54 that requires them to treat the area with a special uh, Well, they have to follow the law, basically. They can't take anything that's not tagged. They can't destroy property, which they have. The raids are being led by Alan Sato, who is head of the uh, Halava Yard. He is the fellow uh, in the red shirt. He also led the raid in uh, La Ie, which took uh, large signs from a private a uh, private lot there was signs protesting uh, the taking of property by eminent domain this area has a lot of uh, dog uh, dog users The area is tagged, even this side, they usually pack their stuff up. Good dog. Well trained dog. And the Aloha shirt is also a policeman, a public affairs officer, I think, Kevin Nakano. That's Alan Sato. So we have uh, one, two, three, four armed police. Nope, more here. Five, six armed police. And. Uh, I'm gonna go check the other side. You know what they do is they split, they split up, they fork, fork the attack to keep uh, documentation uh, at a minimum. So I'm I'm inside the park. I'm walking toward the Warden Baratania side, toward the uh, deoccupy Honolulu encampment. You know it's. It's more a vigil, maybe, I think, is the way to think of it. It's a way of telling people that there is uh, social and uh, financial inequity. There are a lot of, there's a lot of homelessness here in Honolulu, especially around these main corridors. Okay, they aren't here yet, so I'm going to... Head back. Along the outside, we'll get to see the area. Now, there are two main streets that run through Honolulu, through the width of Honolulu, and that's... Baritania, we're on, it's one way heading into town from where we are. And the other street is King Street, which is another very wide street and it heads the other way. I'm going to show you some signs that they glued into the pavement. This refers to Ordinance 1026, which was passed in 2010. To clear uh, Waikiki, basically. And that's being used here, or else they tried to use it. All this is being challenged. We're in Thomas Square. 
where sovereignty was returned to the uh, Hawaiian people. A lot of the uh, homeless are Hawaiian in ancestry. So we can't call them homeless. Hawaii is their home. We can't call them houseless because you see their houses. The houses are tents. So they're not homeless. They're not houseless. What can we call them? There's a been a suggestion to call them uh, displaced. Displaced people. They got a place. They just can't get to it. There's a fence around it. It's private property. Now how did it become private? From 1843, when sovereignty was returned to the Hawaiian people, July 31st, here at Thomas Square, by Admiral Thomas of uh, Her Majesty's Imperial Navy, or whatever they called it. How did that property become private? 1847 was something called the Great Mahele, which was imposed on the Hawaiian nation by foreign sugar planters who wanted property. That allowed the sale of individual property, parcels of land, by the Ali'i, the sugar planters. In 1887, there was something called the Bayonet Constitution. Hawaii was a, uh, a republic. It took away the right to vote from most Hawaiian people. What it did was it required a... Uh, Kiss my fucking ass, fucker. That's it. Fuck you! I, I ditto that, definitely. The law is, you fuck with people, people get to say fuck you. That's, that's cool, eh? And this is fucking with people. That's my editorial comment right there, Kevin Nakano. taking away people's what they need to live and this is organized you know, the houseless people are among the most organized people you'll meet because you have to you have to, to live people gotta leave their stuff when they go to work and houseless people go to work the median cost of a single family home in Hawaii is $640,000. The median cost of a condo is $330,000. The median income of a household is $72,000. So the median cost of a house is nine times that. It's the highest of any place in America. South Bend, Indiana, median house costs 1.4 times the median household income. You can afford a house there. So people say, that's the, pri that's the price of paradise. Well, I don't know who's selling paradise, you know. I think the people selling paradise might be involved in criminal activity. Let me show you how these bins work. You see uh, property going into these uh, numbered bins. These get put on the truck. It's not officially garbage. This is pre-garbage. It goes into the truck. It goes to a storage yard in Halava. Officially under the law, you're supposed to be able to recover the property. Now, how do you recover the property? You make an appointment with that guy in the red shirt, Alan Sato, and you got to drive up there because they don't allow tents on the bus. You drive up there and you can recover your property. Well, you can't. You actually can't do it, right? They've had very little property recovered because you can't show ownership of this stuff. 
and uh, you have to have a car. And it's getting worse on July 1st. On July 1st, there's something called Bill 7 being implemented. Bill 7 allows for the seizure of property instantly without any kind of warning or tagging. And there are lawyers standing by to challenge that. That is just too blatant an attack on the civil rights of people. This is private police. They're conducting what might be the last raid under Bill, Bill 54, Ordinance 11-029. The mayor said he's going to implement Bill 7 starting uh, July 1st, which allows seizure without any kind of notice. There's been more than uh, 70 raids in the last year and a half on Thomas Square under Bill 54. Starting February 2nd, there were some raids before then. December 29th of 2011, there was a raid that tore down the original uh, the Occupy Honolulu encampment. We're on the Victoria Street homeless side where they're taking people's stuff. I was explaining what happens to these bins. Well, officially they're starred for 30 days if you can meet the uh, requirements to reclaim your property, which is to have ownership uh, papers and a uh, car, because you can't put this stuff on a bus, and you can pick your stuff, stuff up. Of course, homeless people don't have that. I'm going to try and get a little closer. They used to cordon off the area, but uh, the court is pretty good in allowing uh, document. You can see a uh, garbage truck in the back. Now, if you're not supposed to destroy property, what is a garbage truck with a hydraulic uh, compressor doing? So they're cleaning up the circuit, your distance from here, yeah? Yep, yep. I just, I'm just here to document. Okay, yeah. We don't want anything mistakenly being missing and be, be blamed for anything. Thank you. Got a garbage truck backing up. Got people putting stuff in. Uh... I had some tents that I tried uh, recovering back in March. There were new tents. Uh, at Target that I bought at Target Embark. I had a credit card receipt, which they said I needed. I had photographs of the tents. I could identify the tents. I couldn't retrieve. I didn't get my tents back. <laughs> you just joined us. We're at the uh, homeless encampment on the corner of uh, Victoria and Baratani Street. You'll see other documenters here from the uh, city and the police. Like this guy I have here. Uh, you'll see other documenters here from the uh, city and the police. Like this guy I have here. Up and run, it it take you take you a few days, right? Moving for you is probably a nightmare. It is for most people. This stuff's all very well organized. They close the uh, park at 10 p.m. There's no restroom after 10 p.m. From 10 p.m. to 5 a.m., there's no restroom you can use. People complain about homeless people like using the sidewalk as the restroom. Well, in some cities in the world, Buenos Aires, Argentina, there's a law saying if you have a business with a restroom, it's got to be accessible to the public. They also have a law where they have things like uh, 
you know, high school cafeterias, public auditoriums. You show up with a padlock, you can spend the night. You got a locker, put your stuff in, get in off the rain. People don't like living like that, but if you don't have the dough, you're not going to end up here. In Thomas Square. Where on July 31st, 1843, sovereignty was returned to the Hawaiian nation. You know, we got a high-ranking guy here. He's got like, this guy's got stars all over him. We got a lot of police here. I'm gonna pan over. We can see what the crew is. We got two. We got three, four, five, six uniform. Seven uniform police. A couple Aloha police. This guy in the Aloha shirt's police. Guys with tags. Uh, documenters here. We're never gonna see this video. I know I'm in it. You know I'm a documenter. I rarely get myself on the video. So I like uh, video showing, showing me doing my job. Um, but I don't think I'll be able to get to see that except by Freedom of Information uh, Act, action, or subpoena. Now uh, there is an action in court brought by the Occupy Honolulu against the city naming uh, the city as defendant along with individuals like Alan Sato there <laughs> for violation of constitutional rights. That was filed I believe in December of last year and it'll still pending. There are various hearings coming up. Uh, the third amended complaint was recently filed uh, last week by plaintiffs, the Occupy Honolulu. And until that's decided, the court has issued strict instructions on how the property of the Occupy Honolulu can be treated. See them putting up a sticker on that post after every raid. It has a uh, tells people who are there who to call and how to reclaim their property. It's, it very rarely is covered because the requirements are not realistic. You have to have a receipt and a car. You can't take the bus up there because you can't put a tent on the bus. You can see uh, crutches being taken. We have records of a prosthetic leg being taken. flotation device, but probably used as a uh, portable cushion to sleep on. It's summer here in Hawaii, so it's very hot. We're at the uh, homeless uh, side of Thomas Square, Victoria Street. They might be heading up over onto the uh, Ward Avenue side, the encampment of the Occupy Honolulu, which is occupied every single night since November 5th, 2011. Remember and remember the 5th of November, Guy Fawkes Day. The city has done all kinds of things to try and get them off. More than 70 raids with heavy equipment like this. Put in 130 planners on uh, Baratanian King. That stuff's going to halal, but ain't never coming back on the street. Now. So what? First thing that happens is when the police come, they separate the uh, person from the property. 
And you can see there's the people aren't here. Some of the clothes are here. You can see jeans and stuff on the, on the wall. All the other things uh, necessary for the acts of living. There is a suit filed uh, by homeless people in Los Angeles, Ninth Circuit, saying this is unconstitutional. The Ninth Circuit said, indeed, it's, Ninth Cir it's unconstitutional. The city of L.A. took it to the Supreme Court, which on Monday refused to hear the city's appeal. Indeed, what they're doing like this, this kind of law in L.A. is unconstitutional. It's the same federal circuit. It's unconstitutional here. And we'll find out about that probably this year. The De Occupy uh, suit calls for damages also, punitive damages. Punitive means punishment. What, it, what would be a fine large enough to prevent it? While they move in everything around, please. Sure, sure. Don't know. Now, when there's documentation, people are a little bit more careful. That's one of the values of actually having a camera on. Uh, when there's no camera, there's less care in how things are treated. I'm trying to get some cameras to all homeless encampments. And I just tracked down some fairly small, unobtrusive cameras you could actually wear on you. Um, trying to get some funding for that. And that would go out to encampments. There's uh, one called uh, Piano Park. It's probably a mile from here down on King Street next to Thayer's Piano. There's a park there. And out in the country, Wainai Boat Harbor. And along the road, along that side of town, they, there's no consideration like this when they raid those camps. So I'm providing a little bit of a service, I think. See, this pile of stuff is uh, clothing. Uh, you can see clothing. Segregated. The bin says roads on it. Not, there's no official department called Homeless People Her Harassment. So out of the budget, it comes out of uh, Department of Facilities, Maintenance, Roads, Parks and Recreation. This isn't helping your recreation. This is helping uh, harass people that don't have a private residence. Which is harder here in Honolulu than any other place in the United States and about third or fourth in the entire world. I think it's more expensive in uh, Dubai, New York, Paris, Tokyo, but we're up there. See a uh, tarpaulin. Oh, that's actually part of a tent. That's part of an embark. Uh, Tent that you can get yeah, that. Let's in. Back, that's behind and, here. Uh, no, let's get uh, over here. You're, just, you're, just a more back. you're obstructing government you observation. So that they can do their work over here. Okay. We're not if saying you that you cannot observe. Standing. We're asking you yeah. to step back okay. and let these guys do their work. Okay? Sure. That's all we're asking. We're not sure. saying that you cannot observe. By all means, please observe. But please step back and allow these guys to have their workspace. Thank you. We're on the Victoria Street side. Now, Bill 7 will allow seizure of this stuff just any time. 
no warning, no tags. So it will depend on selective enforcement. Uh, they're not going to take your stuff if you look like you're a private homeowner. If you look, if you got some folding tents on you, don't put them down. They're they're, they're going to get seized. The law would be immediately challenged. Uh, I've heard from several attorneys just waiting to challenge it. Selective enforcement is against the 14th Amendment of the United States. A lot of people would say we're not in the United States. This is, is, this is illegally occupied by uh, military, by the U.S. military, and it's actually still sovereign Hawaiian nation. And indeed, this Thomas Square is where sovereignty was returned to the Hawaiian nation on July 31st, 1843. They say Hawaii was annexed. There's no treaty of annexation. I mean, try and pull up a copy and send me a copy of the treaty of annexation. There ain't any. <laughs> statue of uh, William McKinley has him holding something that's a treaty of annexation but there isn't really any such document. There, there goes uh... okay imagine that's your household sub. Look around you right now if you're at home. Tell me if your clothes are that well uh, organized. The child's... Uh, we see a lot of children's stuff here. I have uh, footage of two uh, nice kids bicycles being uh, trashed. Probably not from here, but from a previous raid. I don't think the people that are actually doing this work are really like what they're doing. I think they know what they're doing is wrong, but you got to make a living, I understand that. We're all under some form of indenture, and it ain't our choice. A lot of other cities have, uh, with, with, uh, that are less expensive to live at, and Honolulu is the most expensive of any American city. A lot of other American cities have uh, accommodation for alternative living styles, campground, trailer park, that sort of thing. There is a comprehensive plan that accommodates that sort of thing. It was written by... Uh, Robert Erb, ERB, sometimes called Pastor Bob. He would he was formerly homeless uh, and then ministered to the uh, poor, especially in Waikiki. He's written a comprehensive plan to eliminate homelessness in Honolulu. And if you want a copy, just send me an email because I have a copy of it. It accommodates alternative uh, living areas. Points out that even prisoners get housing. People ask me what I would do. Well, there are a couple things. One is that housing is expensive because of social and financial inequality. That private property is illegally private, any way you look at it. We've got to start over. Return sovereignty to Hawaiian nation. Get the military off. The military owns 25% of the land in Hawaii. 25% of the land is the military. If that were returned, it's a 33% increase in the land available for living and agriculture and parks, resource management. If you think of uh, 
Pearl Harbor, which was all a series of fish ponds and food distribution system that fed the whole island and outer island. Places like uh, Makua, where there was a community, which is now poisoned by uh, live fire weapons and depleted uranium. I'd also make people like the uh, telescopes in Mauna Kea pay more than one dollar a year at least on Hawaiian land. Well, let's see if they come and take anything from the the Occupy Corner, they're finishing up here. It's really hot here. It's uh, Officer Kevin Nakano, Iolani Grad, and uh, Alan Sato, Halava Yard. I think they're both named defendants in the, uh, the stuff. I don't know if you caught it, went into the uh, Truck for destruction. I'm gonna walk. Huh? Like a supermarket now. <laughs> it's the uh, supermarket cart return area. <laughs> so what made it to the garbage? Well, I I got it on I got it on video. How many bins have they got? Like four. They got a bunch. There was some kue here, some fuck yous. It's amazing that they had that much stuff tagged. I seen the way they tagged. I didn't know they had that much stuff written down. I never seen the tags from this side, so. Well, I'm sure they didn't have all that stuff tagged. Yeah, I mean, that's why I'd like to look through and see what things got thrown away and see if it was tagged items. These guys need some attorneys, basically. But, you know, how much justice can you afford? You know? I think there's 50 open slots on that other one. I don't, I don't know. I think there's open slots for plaintiffs and defendants. <laughs> there are some open slots. I think they left I think they left it that way on purpose. Yeah, oh yeah, John Doe's. And... I thought there was a fucking seal behind us. We're about to throw a fish. <laughs> I never thought I'd be documenting this this long. I never thought I'd see this either. Then again, I stayed hidden inside a house working at a job, so how the hell would I see it? <laughs> no. You gotta actually pay attention to other people to see them. I'm having a little... I'm wondering how far they're gonna go. That's all, I'm, I'm staying till I see it. Yeah. Show me how far you're willing to go. Yep. And hopefully it gets documented so other people can see how far they're willing to go. I need to get you a camera or something. I know, right? I got one, but it's full of music. My SIM card's full. I even got it's the full of that, like, gig. The death metal, man. Yeah, well, <laughs> I like, there's a lot on there. Experimenting in some new music too. I just found some new stuff. Some band okay, called Elbow. I, I might, I might yeah, I walk to over here. Yeah. I'm gonna walk down the. I think I'm gonna walk. People can see the uh, planners again. Yeah. not wide enough for two uh, policemen to walk abreast. You gotta kind of uh, stagger. Now we're headed over to the deoccupy side.
the Occupy side, you know, there's uh, some uh, homeless people there too, but of course, it's politically organized. Which is to say organized. I should say socially organized. This attempt for a, not only a vigil against uh, social and financial inequity, but also uh, self-organized, uh, autonomous kind of uh, living arrangement. basic deal there is, you know, I'll listen if you talk, if, if uh, you listen when I talk. And we value the personhood of people. This is what I would, I, I'd put it in a better way, but I, you know, I'm, I've been walking around in the sun, you know. Now, as I pointed out earlier in this broadcast, the items that were tagged were uh, swapped out, a lot of this stuff taken, removed to private property. These tents were blue yesterday. Now the agreement with the city is very strict. So. It's also an attempt to start a 24-hour uh, safe zone for uh, those without private housing. They have uh, photographs. Or is it they're breaking the injunction with that? With what? They're breaking the injunction. Okay, I want to I want to document on this end okay, very carefully. No, no, no. they're working. Just keep your distance. Yeah, well, you keep obstructing. You're obstructing government I'm observation. You know, it's I'm my right. Yeah, I'm just asking. My right to document. finally stand back. It's important that I document. And we're not stopping you from documenting. Event. Well, you'll be unreasonable. Though. Your body's getting in the way. You got a, you got a big body. You know what I'm saying? As, as a citizen, you know, we can just step back over here, please. Nobody is obstructing you. By all means, please document. Well, please this guy keeps obstructing me. I got, I got a lot of footage of him getting in the way of the camera. Oh, all he ever asks is for you to you back stand off, back. back. I wouldn't have to approach you and ask I'm you to stand back. back. The other side Maybe of the see camp if you is still the camp, and they are violating the injunction. If Warren wanted that documented on It's the documented. It so. Maybe it's up, it's up for everybody to see. My stuff is public. It's for the public information. Okay, you guys take videos. We don't see that stuff except by subpoena. You use that to threaten people, and that sucks. Okay. And I don't need a fucking shield law, you know? Two green, green tents in this area. There's a there's an actual federal uh, stipulation covering very specifically the property on this side. Senator Terry Anderson advising uh, the crews.
any property taken here has to be made uh, available for return. They cannot destroy property. Kevin, I was told I was supposed to ask you specifically that the police were supposed to know that the other side, by, by taking that stuff, you're actually violating the injunction that's in place right now by the federal judge, and I didn't know if you knew that. It's news to me, too, so. We're here to keep the peace. The city Okay, but you know, the, do you know about the injunction that's in place? You're supposed no? to get training. That's part of the that's part of the agreement with the city too. That the crews, police get trained no, 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 in the terms. Stand ten feet, at least ten feet back from where. Well, the you keep moving. Are. You you should just no, keep, you keep ten, moving. ten feet away from me. Okay. Okay, no. Just be cooperative. Okay. I know. I, I want to take. I want to document what these guys are doing. I, I, I see. I see a garbage truck backing up. Okay. There's well, supposed to be no destruction of property. Fine. Fine. Let them do their job. I'm going to keep track of what happens here because this is the monster that destroys property. There's specifically a requirement that no property be destroyed here in Thomas Square. That's part of the deal with the city, signed in federal court, and you can see that stuff's full of destroyed stuff. And they're backing it up here. I forget, forgot to ask Alan about Chun James' property that was taken in. Hey Doug, let's go ask the Star Cops about uh, the injunction too. Video takes care. I'll follow you. Hey, so can you verify on camera that you don't know about the injunction? No, you cannot. You can't verify on camera. You're walking away from the camera right now, you know that, right? Thank you. That uh, thing that they signed with the city requires that city personnel get training. And that's police and the crew. So they're supposed to be familiar guys, with the terms. See you guys later. <laughs> Bye. And that looks like it. I think what I'll do is I'll sign off as the uh, garbage truck that's not even supposed to be here. Sails off into the... Uh, We need a uh, sign-off music. How does it go? Happy trails? Happy trails to you Until we meet again I can't remember the rest of the words. Today's action star Alan Sato